Guys, we are in the Fenton. Hey, bet you're expecting Pantheon. We'll get to that in a while. But first, we gotta start with breakfast. So, at this very popular cafe, it's called the Rossioli Cafe. Know of that very famous Rossioli pasta in Rome? Yeah, we got a cafe as well, right next door. And we are going to try this famous Roman snack called Maridozo. Sweet bread filled to the brim with whipped cream. I believe they have two story for the origin for Maridozo, which is the first one long time ago, every first Friday of the month, the husband or the boyfriend will give this Maridozo to the wife or girlfriend, which inside they will hidden some small gift like earring or ring something. Then the second version is the women will send this Maridozo handmade by themselves to the man which they like. The cream is very light, airy, a little bit sweetness like a shanty. And the bun is a soft bun with a little bit chewy and sweet. And you can see the bottom of the bun, there's a sugar. So maybe they have add on some sugar to add on the sweetness. Mm. Actually, we have tried Maridozo yesterday in the other store called Rigori. I prefer Rigoli the bun because the Rigoli bun, I think they have infused some fruity or raisin something, the flavor to the bun. So the bun will be more exciting. Yeah. But the cream, I will prefer this one because this one is more refined. Now, of course, Maritoso come in different forms and sizes, I guess. This is a savory version. It's filled with burrata cheese, which is a cow milk cheese made with mozzarella and cream. And on top is sun dried tomatoes. And I think there are some form of like leafy greens on the side, I'm not too sure what they are. Parsley perhaps? Oh, very delicate flavours, very light tasting. They are very mild cheesiness. There's no lingers in your mouth. Very mild. Mm. But it stays there. And the bread, I think when it's made with a savory filling, it matches a lot better because the bread just feels like it belongs in the savory setting. You would taste that mild, maybe butteriness in this in this bread. It's the same bread. The cherry tomatoes are lightly sweet. They are not like bursting with flavors or anything. But the key lies in the burrata cheese. It's simple and delicious. I love it. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the croissant, or the Italian is called the cornetto, which is actually different from a croissant, by the way. Oh, it's stuck to the paper. There we go. Basically, the cornetto is slightly different from a croissant because the ingredients are slightly different. They use uh, less butter and they use eggs. So generally, their, their croissant is more um, sweet. Also, I think it's softer as well. And over here, we have got a filling of pistachio cream and up top are like powdered sugar. Yeah, definitely you could tell it's softer compared to the general croissant that we can carry. Still has a nice crisp surface. The inside is more dense, more bread-like. And the powder sugar gives it a sweetness, so you don't really taste. You don't get that buttery fragrance. I couldn't get the pistachio cream. It's right. It's very deep down. So let me take another bite. Oh, okay. I made a mistake. I didn't expect the cream to sort of stick like this. <laughs> Pistachio cream is dense, robust pistachio flavor. The sweetness sort of matches the robustness of the flavor. So it doesn't feel too sweet yet. It's almost like a very thick sauce. It's really pretty decent. <laughs> and I could still taste like the inherent sweetness within the cornetto. Delicious. 
we're gonna mop this up and let's get you a pen cam. <laughs> so that's a wrap. Glad we came a little bit early because the queue is starting to form now. Anyway, here's the game plan. We are going to the Pantheon and we're going to marvel at this magnificent structure. But the key point for today's vlog is to recommend to you guys one pasta spot that we found. And I believe that is probably, I would say the best pasta spot that we have tried so far in Rome and we have tried quite a number. This is the episode where we are going to find out what is a real Italian al dente. Yeah! And after that, we're probably going to visit a very famous fountain. And then, probably have some gelato. So let's head to the Pantheon. Look at that magnificent structure. That is the Pantheon. But look at the queue. Look at the queue. It's so long, it snakes all the way across. I think it's like a circle all the way to the other side. Anyway, we got an audio tour package, so uh, we're gonna queue up and get in. Then we'll start talking about the pandian. Alright guys, we are now in the Pantheon. We have put our audio guide on. Uh, this is the package that we chose. We purchased the tickets because it's a weekend. I think on weekdays it's free. And the moment you walk in, you notice the Oculus, which is that huge round thing that the sun shines through. And it really does lead up the entire dome. And the particular spot that the sun shines on, if you just look straight up, it feels like you're staring right into the sun. But if you take a look at the dome, it's basically a perfect hemisphere, which means it is a perfect half circle. And the way it is constructed is that on the sides of the cylinder wall, it's about 6 meters thick, the wall. And as it's built upwards, it becomes thinner and thinner. I believe at the top, it's only 2 meters thick. And that is an impressive architecture feat. Now, some quick facts about the Pantheon. If I understood correctly, I think this whole temple was actually built by Emperor Hadrian. And you will notice at the front of the Pantheon, the inscription, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, to commemorate Marcus Agrippa. And it started off as a Roman temple and eventually became a church, which is used to this day. In fact, today is Sunday. They just had a mass going on before we visited. It's also a burial ground for quite a few of the important kings, I believe, and also the very famous Renaissance painter, Raphael. And another interesting fact about the Pantheon is that because you have an oculus, right? So what happens when it rains? They actually have a slight indent on the marble flooring and there are these tiny holes on some of the floors where the rainwater will be able to flow into the drain system underneath. And I think that is a very brilliant design. So yeah, that's a really quick walkthrough of the Pantheon. I'm sorry I couldn't give any more of that information because I'm not a historian and also not a tour channel. But I would suggest if you want to really tour the Pantheon, Get the audio guide. It actually gives you very important points on every single thing in the Pantheon and you get to do a one hour slow walk around and truly understand what this exceptional monument is about and also marvel at the Oculus and the perfect hemisphere dome.
sit in a restaurant. In fact, we are actually sitting on the outside, the extension of the restaurant. Basically, there are two very different feelings to the restaurant. The outside is more casual sort of vibe. The inside, very cheap design. You can see the signboard of the chef's name, Luciano. The neon lights and they have got these interesting pictures of his pasta in close-up. Now, a little bit of background about this chef. This restaurant is a pretty new restaurant. Chef Luciano himself started it in year 2018. Before that, he was actually working in a restaurant, I believe it's called Pipero, and he actually got his Michelin star while he was the head chef at Pipero. He left in 2018 and started this pasta shop. And he's widely known by lots of people to be the king of carbonara because I believe that is the dish that actually got them the Michelin star, if I'm not mistaken. And even, I think in 2016, very well-known Italian chef Carlo Craco mentioned Chef Luciano's carbonara at Pipero. So obviously his signature dish is the carbonara and they make typically Roman pastas in general. Uh, there are some starters as well, but the key point lies in all their pastas because their pastas are all house-made. We have actually been here for this our third time. We've been here two times before this. Because something of this magnitude, of course, it warrants not just one visit, two visits um, to make sure that everything is good. So don't worry, what we're going to recommend is going to be really good. We are going to order, of course, their signature product, the carbonara, but we'll leave that for the last. We're going to get three pastas, starting off with the cacio e pepe, because I think this is also the best cacio e pepe that I've tried. And then we are going to order uh, probably a fresh pasta, because I want to show you the contrast in textures between dry and fresh. Remember the al dente thing? We are digging into that right now. Alright, cacio e pepe, and what they use here is the rigatoni, which is a dry pasta. Again, very similar ingredients. It's basically pecorino, romano, and pepper. Okay, four cup. Look at this. I love how the white uh, bowl sort of contrasts with the like yellow hue of the pasta, and I could smell the smell of the pecorino romano. Look at the beautiful shavings of pecorino together with a sprinkle of um, black pepper. Anyway, let us quickly mix this up. We're gonna mix it up nicely. Oh, look at this. You can already feel the tension in that in that pasta. You can already tell this is definitely authentic. Look at the creaminess. Mm, okay, let's go. Authentic. Perfectly authentic. There's a chewiness to it. A little bit chalky right in the middle. That so called undercooked texture, but not exactly undercooked. And the saltiness from the pecorino comes in along with some heat hints of the black pepper. The beautiful thing about this is it ends with a very beautiful nutty flavor. And if I understood correctly, they also added parmigiano reggiano, which gives you the nutty flavor. I think this really elevates the very traditional cacio e pepe. And it almost turns to a little bit of tang because it makes you salivate and you want to go for it again. intense flavor of the cheese, the nuttiness, the saltiness, that salivating factor at the end of your bite. It makes it go like a, like a continuous kind of rhythm where you go for another bite, and another bite, and another bite, and another bite, and you're done. There is a final piece. Pasta too. Papadella with cotilla meat sauce. The noodle is called papadella. You can see the looks is just like the bun or bread yolk. And the topping is uh, with uh, some parmigiano cheese. And the meat sauce, actually they are using the chicken meat. Let's mix it up. And let's go. Mm. Mm. This fresh pasta is not the dry pasta. So it won't have al dente, no snack. But the noodle is cooked right. We are a little bit chill and bouncy and good bites. Mm. The meat sauce tastes savory with a chicken meaty taste and milder tomato flavor. Actually, it tastes like bolognese, but way more delicate and lighter. Mm. 
Do you want me or the chicken? I think they use everything in the chicken. Like the organs of the chicken, they throw it in. So it gives you this depth of chicken, the aminous, I guess, the sweetness of the chicken. Very, very done again. Fantastic dish. Now, we're done with this. We're gonna move on to the signature carbonara. And there's gonna be a change in tempo because the fork is going to turn into a golden fork. Look at that yellow hue, that egg sauce, and look at that beautiful shredded pecorino cheese together with that nice sprinkle of black pepper. I can literally smell <laughs> the fragrance of this carbonara from here and the guanciale on the sides. Oh, okay, time to put that gold fork to use. Oh, look at this beautiful color. And over here, they are using the thick, uh, I believe it's called spaghettino. The thicker form of spaghetti. Oh, the smell of the guanciale. My god, that <laughs> oil fragrance smell. Let us go! I'm so excited! Rich. Smooth, luscious. It's like a very light footed dancer that dances along this fine line of flavor depth. You could taste the smooth eagerness of the sauce coating, that pecorino cheese, that nice saltiness, the savoriness, but it's not overpowering. Nothing stands out, it melts into the dish. So well rounded, but delicately light at the same time. Mm. Mm. The spaghettino, beautifully al dente, has a nice snap, good bounce, good chew. This is the right type of al dente that we've been looking out for. Again, they have used a mixture of pecorino together with parmigiano. If you really search for it, you get that nutty end to the flavor. This is absolutely the best carbonara. And we haven't even gotten to the guanciale yet. Guanciale. <laughs> Ridiculously salty, but that oil fragrance. The so on chili is a pork joe, the cheek, which is beautiful. You don't use pancetta for carbonara. That's the belly. It's not as fragrant. This is very fragrant. It's super salty, which is why the entire carbonara it doesn't have to be too salty. Here's the guanciale. Every few mouths of the pasta, one bite of the guanciale. Delicious. Delicious. It's a really delicately done dish. Compared to the very traditional Roman carbonara, which is more rustic, this is delicate, it's very elegant. It feels almost like a fine dining pasta. Alright, for carbonara, you gotta eat it real quick, otherwise, it's, you will start to coagulate and then you will start to gel together. Mm. Yep, totally worth it. Delicious. I can sort of understand why you sort of feel that the king of carbonara is really good. It's really good. Mm. Alright, done with the delicious pasta. We are now moving on to visit the Trevi Fountains. And I think we are passing by like a piazza or something which is pretty important. I'm not sure I'll Google it later. But well, let's go! Hey guys! Well, we are on our way to the Trevi Fountain. Let's look at some smaller fountains. We are at the Piazza Navona, which means the Navona Square. I think it's a huge square. And right in the middle, the spire over there is the fountain of the four rivers. You can see underneath there are these four areas with water spewing out from their openings. And on this side is another fountain called the Fontana del Moro. And on the end is another fountain called the Fountain of Neptune. This place is basically very well known and popular for their Baroque style architecture. You can see the detail in the sculptures, how fine and how beautifully detailed they are very nice smooth lines 
So if you happen to pass by, uh, do you know drop by, take a photos or anything, you know, marvel at these beautiful sculptures, but not under this hot sun. Not under this hot sun. Anyway, on to the Trevi Fountains. This is the Trevi Fountain and you can see people swarming this place. Think you're gonna be able to take a photo in peace? Not gonna happen at this time. Anyway, the Trevi Fountain is the largest Baroque style fountain in the city of Rome and it is also one of the most famous fountains in the world. It is right in the middle of a tree road junction and it marks as a terminal to an ancient aqueduct that supplies water to ancient Rome and if I'm not mistaken, it is still supplying water to the Roman citizens today. Anyway, yeah, that's it. We're gonna move on elsewhere to some gelato at a very old shop. It's called Giolitti, I think. One of the oldest gelateria in Rome. Hey guys! First spot today, Rocholi. Mm. Delicate maridozo and cornetto. Good selection and variety with the sweet and savory version of the pastry. You can really tell that quality ingredients were used, which translate to more refined flavor and texture compared to your typical Italian pastry shops. With that said, the pastry that we tried today is black flair in a way. It's like a well done pastry but it doesn't sing to you. Mm. It just feels like a touch and go pastry shop. Yeah, but don't get us wrong, it's actually good, just yeah, not, not great. great. I think it's actually one of the good spots mm. to try out Maritoso due to the fact that they have the savory and the sweet version. Yeah. yeah, so do try it out. And with that being said, Roscioli scores an okay, okay on the gourmet plate, which means it is some good quality Maritoso and Cornetto right there. Yeah, absolutely try it out if you're in Rome. I think it's one of the better ones as well. Um, now, on to the final spot, which is Luciano's uh, pasta, right? Okay, first of all, I need to clarify something before we talk about the pasta, is that they are not very consistent. That's why we went three times. The first time it was good, but the flavors were muted. So we were sort of like struggling with how good it could get. So we visited a second time and it was great, it was fantastic like today. So yeah, bear in mind, it could be not very consistent. Now, with that out of the way, Definitely the most refined Roman pasta that we have had in Rome. The al dente is just perfect. It's like the beautiful snap right in the middle. And the fresh pasta is done really well as well. It's got a nice chew, a nice bounce. It's just the perfect texture a pasta can get. And the flavor is cacio e pepe. Absolutely the best cacio e pepe ever because of the combination of the usage of pecorino and parmigiano reggiano. I think it's very smart. The flavor layers that starts from the salty cheesiness of the pecorino and then turning into the beautiful nutty sweetness, ending with this thing that makes you salivate so that you chase the flavors down mouth after mouth. Yeah, that is insane. Yeah. For the second pasta, papadella, you can definitely tell how refined the flavor of the papadella, the pasta, because the flavor from the cotilla meat sauce is just very delicate yeah. and refined. Yeah. It's very umami. umami, it's light. Yeah, you can taste the chicken flavor. Yeah, you can taste yes. everything in it, but it's light. Of course, ultimately, the most important one is their carbonara. It's just the most silky, smooth, luscious egg sauce that you can get. That egg and cheese sauce It's just so smooth. And you notice there's no sauce, so called. It's just coated onto the noodles. Yeah. And it's just really beautiful. The flavors, they are in harmony. Mm. Nothing sticks out. Nothing sort of screams in your face, you know? It doesn't sort of like scream, hey, look at me, I'm pecorino. No, 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 no. You taste the flavor of the cheese the pecorino and the parmigiano and they just blend into the egg mixture. It's a really crazy camera. It doesn't hit you immediately on your first bite, I'll be honest. But as you take bite after bite, you're like, have I ever had a camera this good? The answer is most likely going to be no. Guanciale is fantastic. It's got that really nice umami of that hockey oiliness. But I do find that certain pieces are quite tough. I think it's because it's like double fried. I see that as sort of like a, not desirable in this plate lah. The texture, okay. yeah, but the flavor is very good. Mm. That gives you that intense saltiness, mm. yeah, that goes well with this carbonara. Okay. Yeah, now if I were to sum up Luciano's pasta in one sentence, it would be the pasta that you'll probably get from Michelin restaurant, like one of their degustation menu courses. 
I would have gone for one plate for Luciano but because of the inconsistency which I think is really important therefore you need to pack it down a little bit and with that being said Luciano scores a half a plate on the gourmet plate which means it is some high quality Roman pasta right there it's absolutely the best that we have tried so far in Rome I strongly suggest that you try it out if you do not have an idea what al dente is for dry pasta and how a fresh pasta should taste like just order the dishes that we ordered yeah. and I, I think this is that crash course immediately you will be able to use this as a basis to determine whether the pasta is al dente mm. because this is al dente okay today has been a long day for us I guess this is where we'll end our food vlog uh, I apologize for this weird position okay, because I'm just literally putting my hand over a rail uh, holding the camera on the lens and it's really heavy <laughs> holding 2 over kilos so hope you enjoyed this food vlog if you did do consider giving us a thumbs up if you've yet to subscribe do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button till we again next week in Rome yeah stay tuned bye